If you could change any choices you have ever made, would you? You can always make another choice and change the course of your success. Everyone has the potency to make inspired choices. Get ready to listen, share, and experience the creativity that is you. Now, here is the host of Inspired Choices Radio Show, Christine McIver. Hello, 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 my friends. Yes, it's Christine McIver here on the Inspired Choices Show on the Inspired Choices Network. I am your host tonight, and we're going to be talking all about business. So if you're someone who is in business, who wants to be in business, who's been in business, not sure you want to continue, are having problems in business, come on over, join us. You can come to inspiredchoicesnetwork.com forward slash chat room. Join us there. Ask your questions. I love questions, whether it's about the show or not, as long as it's pertaining to business. And we will definitely do our best to answer those questions for you. So tonight, we're going to be talking all about from panic to profit. Who wouldn't love to have some more profit in their world, right? Before we jump into the show, I want to tell you a little bit about who I am and why you're listening to me and why I have something that can contribute to you. So I've been in business now for 15 years, going on 16 years. Uh, I definitely started out with lots of, you know, uphill challenges, learning and, and growing as I learned. And oh my gosh, and it just, that actually doesn't end. But I've certainly been through a lot of the trials and tribulations of starting your own business. I've now been doing my own business, as I said, for close to 16 years. It'll be 16 years soon. And I have started different branches of my business. I have learned how to start from zero and grow it to profit. I have definitely been through challenges, especially with the changes in the world. I am a business optimization expert. I work with business owners to really show them how to optimize what it is that they do, especially in the world that we have where we are online and we are sharing what we do with the world through online. I'm also the founder and CEO of the Inspired Choices Network, a platform where we produce live radio shows, podcasts, and TV shows. I'm also the founder and CEO of ICN Summits. We put on virtual summits for hosts from all over the world as well as ICN uh, Publishing, where we do publish books. So as you can see, I've had a lot of um, experience and exposure to business. And sometimes it's not always easy, but for me, business is pleasure. And so that's the type of person I am. When I work with someone, when I work with someone, I, I love to look at the individual, the owner, the entrepreneur themselves, the CEO, look at where they're stopping themselves, where they're blocking themselves, while also showing them systems and processes that will contribute to them. Different choices, right? Not everything fits everyone. And so when I work one-on-one -on -one with, with an individual, I am definitely looking to put the basics, the foundations in place for them and to up-level them, but also look at where they want to go and how we can get them there and how they can have fun doing it. Because to me, if you're in business, if you're not having fun, if you're not having pleasure with it, it's something that needs to be looked at because something that brings you, um, something that brings you joy it will certainly be where you start with a business, something you're excited about. And that's where we have to continue to uh, tweak ourselves to be in that space of joy and pleasure. And that's, to me, that's what business is all about. So Let's get into tonight's show. Let me just read for you the show notes for tonight. So from panic to profit, are you in panic about how to grow your business, pay or pay your bills, or even to turn a profit in your business? Is the idea of continuing to move forward, sending you into a night sweats or having you freeze up with no action at all? Let's take back your power and move into profit while having pleasure in your business. You have what it takes to create a successful business. Now is the time to get the facts straight and level up your journey and outcome to you and outcome to your desire. So one of the biggest things that I know is super, super important for every business owner is for them to come back to that space of pleasure. Why? Look, go back and look at why did I start this business? 
what was it in those first few moments when I started to get excited and I was leaning into the yes, what was it that I knew in that moment? What messages were, were I, was I receiving? What was my, what was my business trying to communicate to me? What happens is we get caught up in this reality and we get caught up in what's going on around us. We get caught up in what everybody else is doing and we forget our true connection. And our true connection is to our business. Remember, your business is its own entity. And if you've listened to more than one show with me, you have heard me say this and it bears repeating, is your business came to you so it could come through you. You have a unique energy, a unique combination of skills and awareness, dedication, soul, heart, love, kindness. Your unique combination of who you are is the energy that is required for this business that you have to be successful. What success looks like we can have many, many conversations about that, and we will touch on that. But you've got to come back to, it, it's a, such an essential piece, especially if you are in panic. We've got to get you back into the why. Why did you say yes? Why did you first want to say yes? What was really exciting to you? What was it about the idea? What could you see? What was your vision for the future that you knew would be fun and pleasurable and could create a profit. So you live on a planet where creating a profit is part of what we do. I'm not talking to nonprofits. I'm not talking to people who are doing something um, on a volunteer. I am talking to business owners and you are living on a planet where we turn profit. Please don't deny that. Please don't try to quote unquote, pretend it's not important. It is important. And when you acknowledge this, you show up with a different energy. Now, what I would love to see you do is come out of the panic, of course. I would love to see you come out of the, the, the worry and the fear and come from a place of strength. Now, if you are in panic, if you are freaking out and worrying about how you're going to pay your bills, if you are in that space, I can tell you, and I'm sorry, this isn't great news, but I can tell you that's not going to bring you into profit. You have to do your personal development work. Now, I was just on a summit. We just hosted um, and published a summit. It was called Up Level Your Future, No More Hiding. And what was really cool about that summit was really looking at what it is that we as business owners need to be choosing and need to be coming from that space. And one of the big, biggest things that I know when I was doing my talk was we need to be coming from the space of being healed or doing our personal development work to continue to grow our capacity, both personally and professionally. If you as a business owner are not doing your personal development work, it, I'm not just talking about taking business courses. I'm not talking about just reading business books. I'm really talking about looking at your own shortcomings, your own limitations, where you are, have resistance, where you go into panic, where you feel out of control. It is so essential that every business owner continues to do their personal development work. Because the largest ingredient in your business is you. So when you are in panic, think about, think about you as a cog in the wheel. You're a cog in the wheel of your business. Um, marketing, promotion, um, conversations with people, sales, operations, all of these aspects are cogs in the wheel of your business. But you, the business owner, you're the largest cog in the wheel. So if you're, and I'm doing this air quotes, if you're broken, if you are not working at full capacity, if you are hesitating, if there's rough edges around you, if you are not considering 
what is going on with you as impacting your business, you're mistaken. You are the biggest cog in the wheel of your business. Now, as you do your personal development work, as you are in the process of of up-leveling some aspect of who you are, you don't have to stop doing your business. But what you need to understand is just like when my father, my father had a construction business and he always needed to have the trucks in top working order so that they wouldn't break down when the men were going to the construction site. Um, the, the backhoes, all of the, all of the equipment needed to be taken care of. All of the equipment needed to be in top order so that they could get the best function going when they were working in the business. You're the same. If you are in panic, if you are in fear, you're not going to be working to your best ability. So you taking care of you and doing your personal development work is number one. It is the very, very first thing. Now, when you go into panic, okay, let's say you're doing your personal development work and you have an experience of going into panic. What's the very first thing that you can do to start to minimize that panic. I'll tell you what not to do. Don't go onto social media. Don't start scrolling. Don't, don't be looking at the expenses that are coming in. There is a time to do that. But when you're in panic, when you are in fear, you are going to just further cement that into your experience. And, and essentially you're going to make it worse, right? You're going to make it worse. The, one of the greatest things that you can do for you is to step back. When you are in panic, step back. Take a few breaths. Go for a walk. Speak to a trusted colleague who is going to be there to support you. And not to tell you these, you know, airy-fairy things like, oh, everything's going to be okay. Well, of course, everything's going to be okay but there will be required action on your part, okay? You want to be around someone who is supportive, that is there to listen, but not someone who is just gonna, you know, rush over it and pretend like it's not important. If you are in panic, that should be telling you a lot of information about where you are operating from. Now, your level of panic can be extreme, to the sky is falling, to um, I don't know if I want to do this anymore, right? You can have different levels of panic. You can have different levels of fear. That's okay. What if you actually allowed yourself to be informed by your experience of you in your business? Let me say that again. What if you allowed yourself to be informed about your experience in your business. In other words, if you were observing yourself while being the CEO of your business, the founder of your business, the owner of your business, if you were observing you, what would you learn? What would you learn about you? There are so many things that we are choosing that will bring us into panic. There are so many things that we will choose that will bring us into fear. And I understand I have been there. I have been there that I just worked myself up over and over and over again to the point that I was having a physical breakdown. That's not fun. But what I've learned from this is that that experience was put there to to contribute to me, to support me, to grow from it, to grow through it, and to elevate myself yet again. No experience that you are having in your business is there to make things worse for you. It's not. Every experience you have, whether it's in business or in personal, is there to contribute to you, is there to inform you. Now, I know when we're in panic and when we're in fear, it feels like the world is caving in and everything is against us. I understand that. And sometimes we need to really, really get some love and support to shift out of this. 
But when we're talking about business, we've got to understand that you've likely never done this business before. Most people, the business they're in is something that they haven't done before. So you are on a continuous learning curve, learning about how to operate your business in 2024, learning how to operate your business probably primarily from working from home. I was talking to a colleague today and it was so interesting how we were talking about she would go she goes sometimes to a client's office and how you know it just it takes so much time each time she needs to go in there and how she gets less done when she's physically in person and it was just interesting as we continued to have that conversation how we looked at wow hasn't things changed so drastically in 4 years that the a really high percentage of people are working from a home office. Well, you're working from a home office that requires a lot of different changes in your life and a lot of different uh, choices as far as your skill set goes. It, it, it impacts your family. It impacts everything that goes on in your life. And yet we, we jump into that. We jumped into that. Many people jumped into a business during uh, COVID and, and started going down a road that they didn't have a lot of experience in. But regardless of how long you've been in business, every step of the way is a new experience for you. And so you've got to be willing to be open to discovering, okay, what is this informing me about? What is here for me to grow through? What is this contributing to me? And sometimes we don't want to grow. Sometimes we don't want to have to learn. We just want to get along and just have things go well. And oh my gosh, I get that. And being in a human body, having a human experience requires us to continue to understand that we're here to have experiences to learn from and grow through. And they don't have to make our lives terrible. They don't have to make us go into panic. But it really comes down to how you approach everything and how what your perspective is around your experiences. Okay, we are up to our first break of the show. You are listening to Christine McIver on the Inspired Choices show on the Inspired Choices Network. I'd love for you to join us. Come on over to the inspiredchoicesnetwork.com forward slash chat room where we can converse. Tonight, we're talking about from panic to profit. Stick around, my friends. We'll be right back. Many of us make choices based on our past experiences or based on what others believe. What would our lives be like if we made our choices based on what we desire for our futures? When you join the Inspired Choices Show with business optimization expert Christine McIver, you'll be provoked to look at what is true and what you know but may not choose that requires your attention. Christine does not hold back. She brings all her expertise to every show. Are you ready to create and live the life you truly desire? Listen for Inspired Choices every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is the Inspired Choices Show with business optimization expert Christine McIver. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to Christine at inspiredchoices.ca. Now, back to the program. Yes, 
Yes, back to the program, everyone. Yes, tonight we are talking about from panic to profit, and we're talking about that from a business perspective. And I would love to know if you have ever had a an experience where you went into panic and, and what that was actually um, providing for you. We do have a question in the chat room. Sarah is asking, is there something you do in the moment when you feel panic in business? A daily practice, maybe. Well, that's a really great question. And it's a, a very, very full question, as it were, for things that you can be putting into your daily practice. I think that, you know, a lot of times we have the best of intentions of having routine in place. And when we we jump into a business, we, we're kind of learning on the fly. And there's lots of different things to be doing. And uh, when we're looking outside of ourselves. And we're looking at what other people are doing. We're thinking, oh, I should be doing that. And I should be doing that. And I should be doing that. And then, you know, what do we do? We take a lot of courses and there, and then the, those um, facilitators, those teachers are saying, well, you should be doing this and you should be doing this and you should be doing this. And then you see so much online. It, we're being flooded with what we should be doing. What I would suggest first and foremost is absolutely have daily practices put in place. And they don't need to be complicated. You know, whether you're working, you know, I used to work in corporate and there were daily practices that we put into place. There were weekly practices that we put into place. One of the most important weekly practices that we did is all of the executives, there was about eight or 10 of us, I can't remember exactly, would get together every Monday morning and we would review where, where we were at in our targets for the quarter what was going on within the organization and what we needed to do, where we needed to be putting focus and support with our teams in that current week to be able to move us farther in our quarterly targets. So take this now and, and let's apply this to your business. You may be a solopreneur. The very first thing that I would suggest that helps you to not be in panic and to not allow that panic to overwhelm you is to have a coach yourself. I can tell you right now, if you've hired a coach and that coach doesn't have a coach, I would reconsider your choice in hiring that coach. Every coach, every business leader should have a coach. It doesn't matter what realm, what you're working in, Every single solitary person who is a leader in the world needs to have someone that's holding them accountable, someone that is showing them a different perspective so they don't miss the blind spots of what's going on with them, someone that supports them when they are feeling like they are really starting to go down the wrong path, and someone who is their cheerleader, someone who is perhaps smarter than they are in certain areas that they need support on. That's number one is to have your own coach and stay committed to having that coach every single solitary week. Checking in with a coach once a month, you miss the reality of what goes on in your life and in your business. It's really easy for us to say, oh yeah, everything's good. And, and it's, it's when we're in panic, some people, and maybe you want to look at yourself, some people actually pull back in sharing the truth of what's happening. They're embarrassed. They feel humiliated. Um, perhaps they know this person professionally in, in some, some of their communities, and they don't actually want them to know the, the ins and outs of where they are struggling. That is really, really unfortunate because a coach worth you know anything doesn't care where you're struggling, what they care about is supporting you to move forward. So having a daily practice of being held accountable is one of the very first things that you want to be looking at. The next thing is you want to be doing a review of where you are operating from. So Monday morning, I love Mondays. Lots of people don't love Mondays. I love Mondays because what it does is it helps me to kind of come back to center. 
what I do is I will look at, okay, what's coming up this week? What, what's on the docket? What, where is our focus? Where do, what do we need to be achieving this week? And what, what do we honestly need to put into place to support the targets of what we have that's coming up this week? That's number one. Number two is allocating space in our calendar for creative time, for nurturing time, for awareness time. And what is awareness time? Awareness time is when we stop working at the computer, when we stop working with other people and we work with ourselves, we go into ourselves, we spend time, perhaps we're meditating, perhaps we're journaling, perhaps we're walking. And when I say journaling, I'm not talking about writing a book. I am talking about seriously taking space so we can hear our own thoughts and we can connect in with ourselves and really pick up on what is being asked of us and what is trying to come through to support our desires. Now, before we do that, we need to have our targets in front of us. We need to have our targets in front of us so we know where, what to ask questions about, where to go into meditation about. We need to have those targets very clear in front of us. Now, it doesn't have to be down to this is what you need to do each day, but you do need to have some stretch targets and you do need to have some realistic targets on what you need to be doing each week, each month to move you just a little bit closer to those targets. When you have targets, then you can have tasks. When you have targets and tasks, then you can see when things start to go offline for you, when you start to move towards panic and worry, you can look at your targets, you can look at your tasks, and you can see what you have missed. You can see where you perhaps went off into a completely different direction, unplanned, unprepared, right? When we are in panic, it's oftentimes because we haven't followed a plan and we haven't tracked our plan and tracked our results. And one of the biggest things that, that entrepreneurs do not do is they do not stay in um in this process of what they are accomplishing today. There's a really wonderful book that I'm actually listening to right now. And it's called, um, I'm going to get you the exact title. It's called The Gap and the Gain. And this is by Dan Sullivan and Dr. Benjamin Hardy. Now, The Gap and the Gain, what they are speaking about in there, which I absolutely love, is tracking your successes. So one of the greatest things, back to Sarah's question, one of the greatest things you can be doing every day is to review your successes. You see, as an entrepreneur, we're out here, we are moving through choices, we're moving through tasks, we're moving through creation, oftentimes solo. Now, that doesn't mean we don't have support. That doesn't mean we don't have a coach, but we are taking the action and following through solo. That can be very draining. That can move us into worry, into fear, and then eventually into panic if we are not acknowledging our successes. Having a success board, having something you're writing down at least one to three things a day at what you succeeded at will help to infuse energy of belief within yourself as you move through challenges. So that is so, so, so important. When you have things around you that you can see, when you have like back here, oh, you can't see it right now, but I have um, a business award that I received. When I look at that business award, it fills me with, with joy and it also fills me with confidence knowing that I, am be, that I am being successful. It is 
yes, it's a trophy. It's not valuable, financially valuable, but what it does is it shows me that all of the days and all of the weeks and all of the years that I've been doing the work that I've been doing, that is a place of acknowledgement. Well, we don't get awards every day, do we? But we do need to receive, our bodies and beings need to receive acknowledgement each and every day. And if you're not giving yourself acknowledgement, you are opening yourself up to criticism from yourself because if we're not in the positive, we can often slide in to the negative, into the panic and into the fear quite easily. So we need to have a plan. We need to work that plan, and part of that plan needs to be acknowledging what we have been successful about. And you don't have to say, oh, you know, I haven't even made $100,000 in a year in being in my own business. Okay. Is that your target? And is that your, was that your target from day one? Or is that something that you have planned out? Do you have a plan? Do you have steps of what's required to actually work the plan? Or are you flying by the seat of your pants, grabbing onto what everybody else is doing? You can't get anywhere without a map. You can't get anywhere without knowing what you need along the way. You can't. You can't go buy groceries if you don't realize that you're going to need money to buy those groceries. That's part of the plan. So do you have a plan for what you're wanting to accomplish in your business? Do you understand all the ingredients that are required to create that plan, to succeed at that plan? And do you have the emotional maturity to acknowledge that, okay, that didn't quite work out. I need to be doing something different. What can I do now? Acknowledging that being in your own business, much like parenting, is a learning game through the whole thing. That is part of what you, if you really understand that, you're not going to be taken out easily by the challenges in front of you. You know, another really big thing to, to really understand is as a solopreneur, as someone who is creating their own business from, from the ground up, there is no previous roadmap. There are definitely different signs along the way that other people have experienced, but you're learning about your business as you go along and you're learning about yourself. Having those autopsies of what you did, what worked and what didn't work, having those really courageous conversations with your mentors, with your coaches, and really looking at, you know, working with people that have more intelligence, more experience than you do, and having people on your team that are smarter than you is going to be something that's going to elevate you. Having the brilliance to say, hey, I messed up on that. And not needing to take yourself down, but really moving your ego out of the way and, and be willing to be a student of your own business and your own process of being a business owner is one of the greatest things that you can do for yourself. When you have these tools in place that I'm talking about, this is where you're going to shift out of panic and we have the opportunity to move into profit. Okay, we are up to our second break. We are going through this quite quickly. Do put your questions in the chat room. Do connect with me if you're listening to the replay. Wherever you are, please put hashtag replay. If you would like to reach out to me, you can connect with me at Christine at ChristineMcIver.com. And that's C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N-E-M-C-I-V-E-R. Or you can go over to my website, christinemckiver.com. Stick around, my friends. We'll be right back after this next break. Many of us make choices based on our past experiences or based on... What would our lives be like if we made our choices based on what we desire for our futures? When you join the Inspired Choices Show with business optimization expert, Christine McIver, you'll be provoked to look at what is true and what you know but may not choose that requires your attention. Christine does not hold back. 
She brings all her expertise to every show. Are you ready to create and live the life you truly desire? Listen for Inspired Choices every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is the Inspired Choices Show with business optimization expert, Christine McIver. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to christine at inspiredchoices.ca. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, my friends. If you're just joining us, we've been diving into what's required to move you from panic to profit. We talked about how we have to understand that we are building this business as we grow and as we move forward. And because of that, our experiences are going to be unique to us. They are going to be our own challenges. They might be similar to other people's, but it, we definitely are going to be having new experiences as we move forward through our business. Understanding as well that we're, we're the main ingredient in our business and we need to be doing our personal development work. If we have any beliefs that are holding us back, we have resistance in some different areas of our life, that is going to move over and impact your business. It can't not because you are the main ingredient. You're, as I was saying, you are the, the primary cog in the wheel for your business. We talked about how we need a plan. And we need to work this plan. We can't get anywhere without a map. We need to have a plan. We need to revisit this plan for sure on a weekly basis. And most importantly, we need to be willing to have a, a, an acknowledgement um, document, a success document, something that we're revisiting and where we're putting down our successes each and every day. That is going to move us through the biggest challenges that we have in our business. It's very, very important that we understand most of all that we have to be held accountable as we grow through our business. And the best way to do that is to be to have our own coach. I strongly believe that any person who is a coach needs to have a coach and anyone who is in their own business, having a coach is going to elevate their business faster and faster. It's very difficult to do this work on our own and grow ourselves and, and be of service to our clients and learn to grow and learn new tools and educate ourselves. There is a lot of pieces to running a business and there's a lot of pieces to being a business owner. Those are two separate things. You know, um, there's a lot of businesses out there that the business, somebody may own the business, but they hire people to run the business. They hold those people accountable and they get them the education and the support that they need for them to be able to run that business. But when it's you, when you're the solopreneur and you're running the business and you are the leader in the business, you, <laughs> you're growing yourself as a CEO, but you're also needing to grow your own personal self because we all have limitations. We all have places and spaces where we might have bought into beliefs that don't serve us. We, you know, maybe you believe that business is supposed to be hard. Well, what is that going to create for you? What's your experience of business going to be? Well, it has to be that business is hard. It has to be because you believe that. Our beliefs are actually driving our business more than we honestly, we know. And so when we are working with a coach, 
that coach will see these places and spaces that through words, through actions, that what we are doing that is going to put a neon light in front of them and go, hold on a second here. Is this true? Tell me your experience about this. Tell me your belief about this. And they will help us to grow that. Now, it's very important that you understand that coaches came from the need of a, of a business owner to be able to speak in confidence with someone, someone that it didn't have um, a stake in, in the business or, you know, some, they weren't going to be fired because um, they knew something about the business owner. They weren't working for it within their business. They were someone separate from their business, someone that they could tell confidential information to, something, that, someone that they could be very vulnerable with, someone that wasn't afraid to hold them accountable. They weren't a yes person for them. That's where business coaches came from. This is where coaches in the business world, that's where they started. And, and they have grown exponentially over the last 20 years. They've been growing and growing and growing. A lot of people say that, you know, the market is saturated with business, with coaches. Eh, really? I don't know. There's um, 8 billion people in the world and there's a lot of people making some interesting choices that they, if they had a professional coach, probably wouldn't make as many of those interesting choices. Um, are there, is there somebody for everyone? I believe that there is. Sometimes we need to go through um, working with a coach that takes us to a level and then another coach will take us to another level and so on. There are times when, when I've had two and three coaches and they've helped me with different areas of my experience of this life, that there's nothing wrong with that. But what you want to understand is having a coach that is going to help you stay out of panic and move you into your desires is one of the absolute best things that you can do. It's one of the lowest hanging fruits of action that you can do that every single solitary person can be doing to help grow themselves, to help move them through the limitations. It is honestly one of the absolute best things I ever did. And I know that it has been exponential in growing me. If I'd had, if I'd hired a, a business coach when I first started my business, I would probably be, I would say 10 years ahead of where I am right now in my businesses, honestly, because I was living in a, a world where I believed that things were difficult, things were hard, uh, you know, maybe I didn't deserve all those things that go through our minds. And I know that a business coach could have moved me much, much fa faster, but it is what it is, right? So today, what you want to understand is your personal growth within yourself is key. That's key. Having your systems in place and acknowledging, you know what, I'm really crappy at this. Like I joke and I talk about this a lot, but I'm really crappy at emails. I've got a nightmare of emails. I saw somebody's email. They, sh they shared their screen. They had over 300,000 emails in their inbox. I was speechless. I was speechless. A lot of people talk to me about, oh, I've got lots of emails. Yeah, I need to spend some time cleaning that up. And it really throws me. That is just one small example of you need to be walking your talk. If you are a business person and you don't have things organized, you don't have things lined up to support your customers and your clients, how are you going to be successful? If you're someone who coaches individuals and you're, you're not organized on your computer and yet that is your hub of your business, how can you be successful? The energy that you're being, we have to walk our talk. We have to clean up our messes. We need to get our systems in place. We absolutely need to follow through on what's required to hit our targets. When you don't have a plan, you, you're, you feel like you're free falling. And of course, you will go into panic much more often because you can't see the next step and the next step. You can't actually 
um, measure your successes to, that will keep you out of panic. It's incredibly important that you understand that your business is like a house. You need to have a foundation. You need to have support walls. You need to have things contribute around you. And you need to know your limitations of your personal capacities and where you need to bring others in to help you to grow farther in your dreams and your desires. It is challenging, but it is not complicated. Do you recognize that you have limitations? Do you recognize what you're great at? And do you recognize where you absolutely need a resource to come in and support you on the next steps. There are things that I can do with my eyes closed that friends and colleagues and clients just roll their eyes. They can't even imagine trying to do it. Okay, cool. There are also things that I don't, I'm not great at. I don't want to do. I don't want to learn that I hire people to do because that's not where my skill set is you as a solopreneur, you bringing in support around you and around what the business needs is absolutely going to get you out of panic. Now, if you have initial panic that, you know, you don't have funds to pay everything. Okay. Well, that really requires an emergency session with a coach to really start to pull things apart. Cause usually when we're in panic, we throw everything onto a big mountain and we can't see through it right? So that's when you need to have someone come in to support you for sure, for sure, even if not in the long term. Understanding that getting organized and seeing the steps is going to be one of the greatest things to move you out of panic. You may still be worried, you may still be concerned, but you're not going to be in that monkey mind of worry and freaking out. You, you can't get out of that. We are already up to our second break, or our last break, pardon me. This is going really, really quickly. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for pressing that play button and for interacting. Again, I'm Christine McIver. You can email me, Christine, at christinemciver.com. Check my website out, christinemciver.com. Reach out. Let me know how you need to be supported. Let's see if that would work for you and I to work together. I've been there. I've done it. And I've got a lot of skills and a lot of uh, systems that will support you to come out of panic, to move into profit, and to have your business be a pleasure. Stick around, my friends. We'll be right back after this break. Many of us make choices based on our past experiences or based on what others believe. What would our lives be like if we made our choices based on what we desire for our futures? When you join the Inspired Choices Show with business optimization expert, Christine McIver, you'll be provoked to look at what is true and what you know, but may not choose, that requires your attention. Christine does not hold back. She brings all her expertise to every show. Are you ready to create and live the life you truly desire? Listen for Inspired Choices every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspire Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspire Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is the Inspired Choices Show with business optimization expert Christine McIver. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to christine at inspiredchoices.ca. Now, back to the program. How do I know, Christine, if I'm supposed to be in business? 
I've had that question before. Have you ever wondered about that? Have you ever questioned if this is what you're supposed to be doing is being in your own business? Well, my business has been called Inspired Choices for a long time. This is called the Inspired Choices Show on the Inspired Choices Network. Those words were not chosen uh, just randomly. One of the challenges that I had when I was a much younger individual was I criticized choices that I made. And I really wanted to have um, an easier time of making choices. And when I started to look at my business and what I wanted to call my business, I looked at what, what I desired and the word choices really came in. And, and then I looked at, well, what does that mean? And what really started to play with in my mind was I wanted to be, have, make inspired choices. I wanted to make choices that really spoke to me, that really jumped for me, that, that really moved me. And, and the word inspired is all about the spirit within you. If you can recall when you first thought about being in your own business and you, you really felt that inspiration, that excitement that came up, when you had that moment of inspiration that really got you excited, that is, that is the, your spirit guiding you and telling you that being in business will contribute to you. Now, do you have to stay in it forever? <laughs> no. And you, you'll you get other inspirations about other things for sure. But if you weren't supposed to have a business, your being wouldn't have lit up when your ideas came through. Let me say that again. If you weren't supposed to have a business, your being wouldn't have lit up when the ideas came through. Knowing that life is challenging and understanding that you are growing and your business is growing and evolving every single day. Cut yourself a break. Be kind to yourself and start to acknowledge the successes that you have had and acknowledge that you have beliefs that are contributing to you and you have beliefs that are pulling from you. How you experience your business and how you experience yourself in business is going to speak to the panic. But when you are operating from a place of confidence, when you are operating from a place of having systems in place, systems in place that will support you, when you surround yourself with intelligent individuals that support you, you cannot help but begin to turn a profit because you're going to be educating yourself. You're going to be educating your team members. You're going to be looking at what's required in the business to have profit. When you are in panic, you shut down every bit of awareness. You shut down ideas from your business that can contribute to you. You shut down ideas from your spirit that will contribute to you. Panic does nothing but spin you out. So you've got to start to utilize tools to take you out of that panic. Put in those daily practices, put in those weekly practices that show you that you are working this business. It's not a hobby. It's not a hobby. It's a business. And it's a business that you are growing each and every day, each and every week, as you succeed at your tasks, you're growing yourself and you're growing your business for now and for the future. Follow those inspired ideas. Follow those inspired, exciting moments. Allow them to inform you. Allow them to grow you. If you want to up-level your business, if you want to up-level you, understand it's going to require a new set of skills, so you're going to need to grow again. And just keep this in mind. You don't grow through the easy days. You go grow through the challenges. My friends, thank you so much for being here. Please reach out if you would like to know more about how I can support you, how I can bring your voice to the world how I can help you to move out of panic and really craft a business and a way to operate within that business that will give you more confidence, that will create ease and pleasure in your business and bring profit to the forefront. Again, my name is Christine McIver. You can email me, Christine, 
at christinemccover.com. You can reach out to me if you're thinking about having a podcast or you're interested and curious about having a summit. We can have those conversations. Return next week. I'll have another business conversation with you to move you forward. And we will see what we will create together. And until next week, remember, you can always make another Thank choice. you for choosing to listen to Inspired Choices Show. Christine McIver will return next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, be willing to choose what you really desire. This is your life, making the choices that bring you all that you desire. <laughs>